so I wanted to go back and revisit an older video, running Linux on a 20 year old computer, a Pentium 3 computer specifically this one which was made by Tiny, a British company, and that does say Intel Pentium 3 on the front of it, Y2K compliant, oh yeah we've got to be uh, year 2000 compliant, and Windows 98 on that sticker. So while I was able to run Linux on the system, so I opted for Tiny Linux, I was unable to do anything due to the lack of network connection. So it has a dial-up modem and a TV card. Yeah, great, very useful things in this day and age. And yeah, we can look on the back of it. And yeah, dial-up modem, well that's no good. I've got a broadband network with, yeah, Ethernet connections everywhere. I did try a wireless card, and but didn't have the drivers in the kernel. The, specifically the cut-down kernel that comes with Tiny Core Linux. Now there was a question about, is that a coax network cable there? And I thought, oh yeah, actually it could have been a 10 base 2 network port. But I did look at it closely and it does say UHF on it. So yeah, that would be TV, specifically analog TV. So pretty useless now in the UK. Analog has now been switched off and been replaced by digital. I'm gonna go back and have another look at this. Because I've managed to order a couple of items, or now purchased a couple of items, I have an Ethernet card, a PCIe Ethernet card, and I have a USB card, USB 2 card. So yeah, the problem with that one, it has two USB 1 ports. So I spent a grand total of £7 on this, or these two items. The USB card was more expensive. How annoying. And I know this is a fairly redundant thing because you have something like this, a Raspberry Pi Zero, which was £12 to buy. Uh, it's considerably more energy efficient and powerful. <laughs> so yeah, this is all a completely redundant exercise, but proving a point that we can run Linux on an ancient system. <laughs> So I was thinking a bit more about the choice of Linux distributions. I went with Tiny Core Linux, mostly because of the name, Tiny Core and Machine Made by Tiny, but it would be very lightweight. And yes, indeed it was. It did run perfectly well. I was thinking, what other options are there? So in terms of desktops, there were a fairly limited choice. Really, uh, upper limit was like the LXQ, LXDE desktops that, well, I know 64-bit versions did use up more than 256 meg of RAM, or about 256 meg of RAM, which is all this machine has. But there was another factor I didn't consider at the time, it was download size, because this predates running on USB, although there are alternatives, like being able to run the drivers off a CD, and then yeah, I could have used a USB flash drive. But let's just try and use a CD. So yeah, we're limited to... Oh, what's that going to be? 650 megabytes or 700 and something, forgotten low number, depending on the disks. I think mine are about 700. So I thought, what about Debian? That's always an option, and they still do a 32-bit version for Debian. So yeah, the NetISO does come in at small enough. Uh, XFCE, well, that would require way too much memory, so that wasn't a, an option. SLI TAS was mentioned. Um... To be honest though, I, it's been so long since I used SLI TAS, and I, I just really can't remember anything much about it. But I know the packages that it's using is the same with Tiny Core, so am I going to really gain much? Possibly not, not really. Um, yeah, I think that's actually a smaller download than Tiny Core was as well. And they, oh, they actually come with a floppy boot disk. Great, running an older system, so you could use a floppy disk without a CD-ROM, and yeah, then you'd be able to boot uh, from other options, USB or LAN with a Pixie boot. Puppy Linux, been a long time though since I've used Puppy, but yeah, that is always an option. Uh, so yeah, 32 and 64-bit versions. Bodhi Linux is one I thought about, but then what I didn't think about later on was it is Ubuntu-based and would therefore be limited to 64-bit. There is a legacy release, uh, but that was the kernel 3.2 from what I'm trying to remember. Anti-X, and this is what I'm actually going to go for in this video. So yeah, I'm going to take a look at Anti-X, because this is good for running on older systems. Uh, limited on the download options, so oh, I've come on the wrong page there. So we've got a base, 
install which is 660 that's what i've downloaded and put on a cd we've got full install for one gig no good for me because i don't have a dvd drive so i've got the two cards fitted easily enough which enabled me to use a usb mouse and keyboard and to get on the internet with the ethernet card so that's great with an internet connection i was then able to experiment further with tiny core linux and then i ran into the issue with lack of memory so i was trying to run firefox firefox being the only browser um, really suitable that was actually within the current enough version i couldn't find anything lighter weight in the repositories and yeah i got to the point where firefox just couldn't open anything it was just starved of memory and the system well it's only a 500 megahertz pentium 3 and with a slow hard drive so the memory is spilling over into the hard drive and the slow read write speed is just crippling the system i'm convinced that if the system had 512 meg of ram Opening an application and running a Linux desktop would actually be a doable thing, but right now it seems to be one or the other. Anyway, after 7 minutes I was able to finally type in an internet address and open a static website. But now to try something else, let's take a look at Anti-X for the Linux distribution. The install of Anti-X took just over 30 minutes, so that was rather painful to wait through. Performance of the ICE window manager seemed really good as a live CD and just as good as a fully installed operating system. Looking through the list of applications installed, there certainly seems to be a lot wider choice than a tiny core Linux. I suppose that's reasonable to expect. And the choice of applications seems really good for older machines. Now I did make the mistake of trying to run Firefox again. I thought let's try and repeat a test of uh, yeah, trying to run Firefox and I ran into the same problem earlier where there simply was not enough memory. It resulted in Firefox grinding to a complete halt, to the extent that I decided to resort to a TTY console to kill the process. I was trying to go for another web browser, I was thinking something like Midori would be really good, but just couldn't find it in the repositories. But I did find a text-based browser called Lynx. Well, on the plus side it worked, and I was able to go on Google. On the downside though, <laughs> it's just not a good way to surf the web. What I didn't realise was the developers of Anti-X had already thought about the web browser and included a very lightweight browser on the system called Dilo. Now with Dilo I was actually able to get on the internet. It was actually quick enough to load a static web page, but I did push my luck and try and open YouTube. It still didn't really work very well at all. So let's go back to the original question I asked in the previous video. Can you run Linux on a 20 year old computer? Well the answer is yes you can. But will it provide you a usable system? Usable in the sense that could I go and browse the internet? Could I work on a document? And the answer to that is simply no. Not without waiting a long time between requests, and that is simply not something I'm prepared to tolerate. But to be honest, I would much rather use a Raspberry Pi. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.